We all love waiting for the air bubbles to bleed from our shocks or gear differentials, right? No. Well, it is a necessary evil, so that's why today we're gonna take a look at the Hoodie Air Vac system. It is a sealed chamber where you can put your gear differentials as well as your shocks in there to create a vacuum that pulls the air right out of your shocks. I thought I said that wrong, but no, that's right. As impatient as some of us are waiting for all of the air bubbles to come out of our shocks or gear differentials, especially with really thick fluid, it is a necessity to take to remove all that air to make the shocks more consistent as well as remove the air which expands when heated up which causes even more issues to the shocks. So that's why today we're gonna take a look at the Hoodie Air Vac system. Similar vacuum systems already exist out there with the Hoodie Air Vac system being probably one of the nicest available, but also one of the most expensive. The Air Vac system is offered in three different sizes and three different price points, with there being an eight scale off-road, a 10 scale off-road, and then a 10 scale on-road touring car size. Although I think we have a hack that'll make all of those shock sizes work with only one Air Vac, but we'll get to that later. For our purposes, we picked up the biggest canister available, which is the eight scale off-road canister. And when you unbox this system, you receive this really nice premium pouch from Hoodie that is zippered. It's a really nice case. And then of course there is the canister, you receive instructions, and then there's a 600 millimeter long lead with four millimeter bullets on each end. Now to power the AirVac system, you can either use a 12 volt DC power source or a 7.2 volt battery pack, which is a six cell NIM. For our applications, we're just gonna use a power source. Now taking a look at the canister really quick before we fire this thing up and use it, it's made of four pieces. So essentially we have the plastic lid, which is kind of like a plexiglass. It isn't glass. And then there's a valve up here on the top with an O-ring to seal this all up. Then if we look at the base, pulls right up. And this is basically a post with a plate screwed on here with an M3 screw. Now there are a few O-rings on here. This is what kind of seals the post into the vac system. And then our vac system has this big O-ring that helps seal the canister lid onto the base. Now, if we look around the backside, you have a couple of four millimeter bullets for the lead that is included. And then the power button, which is a hold to power. You can't just push and release. You must hold it to power the unit. And when you're finished, you release the button. So we're gonna grab a power supply and we're gonna fire this thing up. So to use the air vac system, essentially you just wanna plop your shocks inside. You can use four shocks or you can use it for a gear differential. So we're gonna plop our shock right there. We're just doing one shock for demonstration. We're gonna put the lid on. And now with the lid on, we wanna hold the lid, the canister onto the base tightly. Screw the valve tight, but not too tight. And essentially we're ready to fire it up. Now Hoodie says in the instructions that you should hear a change in the sound of the pump to indicate that it's finished. With thinner viscosity shock fluids, uh, bleeding out the air bubbles should only take a few minutes. Thicker fluids will take longer, especially thick diff fluids. There we go. So the pump started making some odd sounds, kind of chirping a little bit. That's our cue. So our valve is tight. Our lid is just being pulled to the base, so it actually will not come off right now. This eight scale off-road shock that we're using has 300 CST weight in it. It's kind of a thinner fluid, but it doesn't take a whole lot of time to get those air bubbles out and to draw them to the surface. It really only took us like a minute or two um, earlier when we tried it out. So when we're all done and you have the air bubbles out of the shock, um, essentially now the procedure is to loosen the valve. You can kind of hear the air hissing out of there and now the lid should just be loose. Just pull straight up 
and your shock is now air bubble free. If you wanna use gear differentials in the air vac system, it's recommended to pull the post off with the plate and then you can just stick your out drive over the center hump and the gear differential will just sit right there on the base and you throw the canister on the top. Now we tried this with a 10 scale gear differential and we found that that gear differential would fit with the canister lid over it by just putting it in one of these holes. In fact, we could probably fit two of the 10 scale sized gear differentials on the plate. Though if you just use the base, it will fit only one eight scale gear differential. Differential. That 10 scale gear differential that we tested earlier up on this post was equipped with 1 million weight differential fluid. So that's really heavy, thick stuff. What we found is that the air vac system pulled the air bubbles out really well and actually smoothened out the oil pretty quickly. But drawing out the air bubbles from that gear differential wasn't as fast as bleeding the shocks. The gear differential took probably a couple of hour, hours to really get all those air bubbles out. But it really did bring all the air bubbles out. Um, once you use the vac system and draw all the air, you can kind of just leave the canister where it is and let your air bubbles draw out. Every once in a while, I would ensure that the vacuum was still really tight by just feeling the lid to see if it was still attached to the base really well, and it was each time, but I would still hold the button and just see if it would draw out more air from the system. But in the end, after a few hours working out the bubbles in that 10 scale gear differential, um, the final result was really, really nice. So it's been another half an hour since the battery died in this camera. Uh, just put the battery back in the camera. The diff oil looks really clean of bubbles, so I'm gonna take the canister off. Now, I mentioned earlier that we might have a hack of how you can use different size shocks with the canister. So this is a 10 scale off-road shock, and then here, is um, a 10 scale touring car shock. And of course, the shock holes here on this plate are just way too big. So you could remedy that pretty easily. These plates, I believe, are sold separately. But another really inexpensive, quick, and kind of easy way to change out this plate would be to use a different plate. You could just make your own. If you had a 3D printer, you could print a plate with different size holes. If you had some carbon fiber sheet, that would be pretty easy to do with that as well. My idea is to use some Lexan sheet. So this is RJ Speed 0.75 millimeter Lexan. This was like $5, so I'm just just gonna really quickly trace out a new plate with this Lexan and use my body hole reamer to make some new shock sizes. Okay, the plate is finished. It's just a rough cut. You could always clean it up later with a Dremel, but I'm not even gonna attach it onto the plate with the screw. I'm just gonna set it on the top let me just make sure, all right. And now here's a 10 scale off-road shock. And here is a 10 scale touring car on-road shock. No problem. That's a really easy hack to make one canister size of the air vac fit for all of the different shock sizes. And to store this little makeshift Lexan adapter, could just easily go back into the air vac packaging and uh, just store it for when you need it later. I hope you guys enjoyed this video on the hoodie air vac system. If you have any questions on this guy or anything else, you can leave that for us down below. And if you want more information, we'll have some links down below for you as well. I'm Brett from A Main Hobbies. Thanks for watching. Hoodie? Hoodie. Hoodie? Hoodie. Hoodie? Hoodie?